if you remember a little while back, well I say a while back, probably a month or two ago, Steve from FJ Camping and Touring that are now known as Saw Adventures, which is, stands for Stephen, Annie and Winnie Adventures, dropped over my place to get a 12 volt set up. The 240 volt was not set up, okay, because that needed to be done by Australian regulations by a electrician. The man himself. How you going, mate? And it's all completed. He mainly designed this. I simply helped Steve in installing the 12 volt aspect and mounting some of the components to the system. So it's quite amazing in such a small package just what this can produce, how much power it is. So in, in, in some ways it's very similar to what's in my vehicle. As, as such you do pretty much the same thing. So if you go to Steve's YouTube channel which is now Source Adventures you'll see a video where I talk about in more detail how this exactly works. So your best bet is just to go there and I'll put a link to that video in the comments section down below. So check that out. 240 volt which is all working now. So it's turned on now. Steve was just charging something here before he just unplugged it. So you can see it's got the 240 volt fuses. There's his input, his double pole output there. We got to see the remote energy connection. So this will turn on and off his inverter here. Now this inverter, as you're aware, has got the built-in charger in it as well. Specs on this, you can go on their website. This is the Renergy 2000 watt inverter charger. You do need a qualified electrician to wire the 240 volt aspect of this. And Steve's recently had that done. Hence you can see as per regulations here in Australia, it's all been wired as it should be. And it's all been tested to be safe. The earthing points, etc. everything's safe. So he's added another component down here, which I think is cool. These are from Kickass, and I'm not sure what they call this. It's like a power box. Yeah. It's so simple. You just take a main power from the source and then just it connects through into your system via an Anderson plug, I believe, is it? Yeah, so I've got um, an Anderson plug here, and that's connect. That's the cord from this unit, plugged into one of the Anderson connections we put in when we wired it up. That's right, yep, I do remember we wired that. So that's getting the power from the Egon DC hub. And then these are your input or output. So this one here, that, that Anderson plug there is into my travel buddy. So that I want to use, if I want to use the travel buddy, and then here you've got a um, display it uh, gives you voltage but it's not as you know it's not really useful when you've got a lithium battery is it no nah, that's really more for so uh, with agms the lithium that's just really a wasted space i uh, myself will probably remove that and put another cigarette lighter plug or a double and usb plug it's got a heap of usb points in here and you've got a uh, one of those ones that finds the correct voltage, uh, mm. what do they call them, USB, and you might have just seen there, I actually yeah, I just turned, noticed the light, I, turned, I was wondering what it's that was. It's got a light in it as well, so mm. that's really handy. So these are available from Australian Direct, Sunny Coast, here in Queensland, Australia. It's the brand, it's called Kickass. If Steve's got one of these Cellfi Goes, which boosts your mobile phone signal. So if you've got like, for example, one or two bars, it'll bring it out to three or four bars, won't it? Yeah. So if you're in an area, that in and... if you're in an area where you've got a weak mobile signal, these are good, but be aware these do not work if you do not have some form of signal coming in. So that's where Starlink comes in. And Steve's just so happens to have Starlink, <laughs> which is here right now. It's all connected. It's being powered. How, how are you powering your Starlink? Where? So, so I, I had, I just to tell you why I pulled it out, I just come over here and the ants are swarming here at the moment. I don't know whether there you is, can see. There is quite a, a few and the, ants. The ants were running up the cord to the power cord. Uh, so I just pulled it out for the moment while we're here recording and I'll fix that up. Yeah. But I'm powering it through the 240 here. So on the display there when it was plugged in a minute ago, it was taking about five amps out. 
So, and that's with the inverter running as well, because they do chew a certain amount of voltage. Um, you can see there, there's 0 0.96 amps coming out, and I know the fridge is not cycling. So if I switch this off, I'll just press that button off. That should shut down in a second. And you can instantly see that it went up to plus. It's actually the solar panel on the roof is putting power back into it's the system. It's now charging, and it's a wet, rainy day today. So it's very overcast, hence why it's it's only putting in so much air. And the battery, what's the battery at? 86%. So, so I awesome. haven't started this car since uh, about 2 o'clock yesterday afternoon, and it's about 3 o'clock now here, so it's over 24 hours. Yeah, no, that's good. Steve designed this, the box, and so on. So And he came over, and I installed the 12-volt aspect size of him and helped him install all these components in and the electrician actually suggested this is new the electrician actually suggested this idea with the 240 volt and i think that's brilliant look at that how how easy access that is it's so just I can brilliant put the outside shore power in there because as you're aware this has got an ac charger on it as well and so, um i think i was talking to you when we did the video mm. and i said i may sneak a coffee machine in yeah. I hope Anne's not listening because <laughs> have a look in here, Phil. I haven't showed her yet. <laughs> cool. Have a look in there. Oh. That's a secret compartment. <laughs> How cool is that, guys? How awesome is that? Look at that. Very nice. And good to see you. You picked an espresso too. Good brand. Steve's going to find good use to that. I'm sure he is, and I'm sure he's very happy with that. Oh, it's absolutely amazing, Phil. You've done an amazing job with the wiring. I even had the car at the auto electricians the other day, and the auto electricians were looking at my, your system. They wanted to know what company wired that up because they actually thought it was very professional. What company? Yeah. So really. Yeah. So you did a really good job. You you fooled a couple of auto electricians, thinking that it was so well done. So. Yeah. Oh wow. Well, it's probably a lot better than what most. Um, auto electricians works are unfortunately not all auto electricians are the same and that's why I learnt to do this myself and I had trouble finding a decent auto electrician and I know like um, Phil has um, put a lot better parts in than probably what I would have got done through an auto electrician like yeah. he, he's over engineered everything really yeah. Um, to, to be for worst case scenario with charging and discharging and all that sort of thing. Something I've learned over the years is you want to, if you want to save some money, sometimes a little bit, you know, it helps just pay a little bit more money for something like upsize the cable. You know, as I did in my setup that I've spoken about in the past in regards to the DC DC with that cable. Because I updated to a DC DC momentarily, the one that was double the capacity. But then I I didn't have to spend any money on the cable because I future proofed for that about five, six years ago when I put a cable in that I knew eventually that there were DC DCs were going to come out and charging rates are going to be a lot quicker. So all I had to do basically was just ch change the fuse. That's all I had to do was change the fuse. And Steve will find the same. We've got some good heavy duty cable in there. So anytime he wants to update something, go to a bigger battery or whatever. If he goes to a bigger invert, you know, it's going to it's going to handle that. He won't need to spend the extra money on the cables. And in the long run, it just works out a lot cheaper. Thanks for joining and go and check Steve's channel. I'm going to do another video on it myself and um, go into depth on the Egon DC hub, the Renergy inverter, everything. Awesome, I'm gonna look forward to that. So keep an eye out on his channel, which is formerly FJ Camping in Turin, but now it's called Saw's Adventures. Saw Adventure? I'll Saw quick, Adventure. I'll quickly grab something. Here we go, hang on, we've got something here. Check this out. It's also got a new logo. Yeah. And thanks to Terry, Terry um, actually made this for Steve yeah, so if you want one get it leave a message um, on my channel or on one of the videos and I'll see if I can get one for you but SOAR actually stands for Stephen, Annie and Winnie Adventures so that's our names these boards look wonderful eh you know my board I haven't even used it yet it's too good to use <laughs> and I'm not the only one I'm not the only one there's a lot of people around that's told me the same thing they haven't used their boards because they just come out so nice they're like a a art piece on this beautiful 
somewhat rainy day in the middle of summer beautiful weather though it's more like a winter day so you know me i love this cool weather i don't like the hot and till next time see you cheers